effort and I was just listening to what you were talking about with the teachers and the community centers and it just shows how much there is in terms of community building and what we need to have from the communities because that I think is actually where the work has to start. Once the community starts, then things will happen. And as with your community centers and your teachers, I'm sure you'll find a way. But thank you very much also for the recommendations you brought in. Talking of community centers and from the community level, we're going to move to Bangladesh, to Mr. Mathura Bikash Tripura. Just to explain, Tripura is one of the indigenous peoples ident who that identifies indigenous in Bangladesh. Mr. Tripura is the executive director of an indigenous organization called Zabarang Kolyan Shamiti, which is, has been working for many years and he's one of the leaders in that, uh, in that area. So Mr. Tripura, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> let me start with uh, greetings in some indigenous languages that I know. Kulumka, Juju, Pengnam, Rikubaya, Gorlagi, and also the national language, Namaskar and Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning to everybody. Uh, actually, uh, our organization is uh, working uh, for the rights of education in indigenous languages uh, for the last uh, uh, about one decade. Uh, so I would uh, just like to share the experience of uh, our works in uh, Bangladesh. <clears throat> uh, in Bangladesh, actually, we are about uh, 45 uh, indigenous people, indigenous groups. Uh, we speak about uh, five different uh, linguistic groups. Uh, so uh, if we see about the uh, policy or legal aspects of the uh, position of our languages in, Bang in Bangladesh, uh, as part the Constitution of Bangladesh, actually there is only uh, one single language called Bangla, because in the Constitution uh, it is mentioned that the national language uh, of Bangladesh will be Bangla. So uh, the other languages actually uh, not that much uh, recognized in the Constitution, but uh, there are some contributing uh, uh, clauses like uh, in, um, in one clause, um, the constitution is also recognizing uh, the small ethnic groups of Bangladesh uh, to, uh, to create sort of uh, uh, opportunities for them uh, to uh, preserve and uh, promote their uh, heritage and culture. So uh, maybe we can uh, use this clause to uh, develop the languages of indigenous peoples. So there are also some other uh, legal uh, documents like uh, the Chittagong Hill Tracks Accord, Accord between the indigenous people and uh, the government was signed in 1997. In this uh, accord, uh, the uh, education in mother tongue is uh, recognized. And uh, the primary education development programs, uh, this program also uh, recognized the needs of uh, education in uh, indigenous languages and following that actually uh, the national uh, education policy was formed uh, in 2010 and uh, there were uh, a, a list of activities on uh, indigenous languages and education in that uh, policy. So actually my organization uh, works on these issues like uh, in, uh, in 2006 we have started piloting uh, education in mother tongue in, uh, in uh, actually three, uh, three majority languages, indigenous languages, Chakma, Marma, and Tripura, my language. Uh, so uh, this three, in, in these three languages, we have started uh, pre-primary and gradually up to uh, grade three. Uh, so we uh, tried bringing the policy makers, the bureaucrats uh, in uh, education ministry uh, to visit our uh, schools and to sh uh, sort of showcase the, uh, the uh, activities that indigenous languages can be used in the education system. And uh, following that, actually, the government uh, from 2010 started thinking uh, about 
uh, through the national education policy and in 2012 up to 2016 uh, there were a, a series of activities uh, undertaken by the government and uh, from that in 2016 we got that the government uh, has started already uh, the education uh, pre primary education for the indigenous indigenous groups they have started uh, primarily with five languages five major languages uh, three from our uh, hill region and two from the plain regions so um, we uh, doing that actually we have uh, mobilized the uh, community based uh, organizations the networks national and uh, regional networks and also the non governmental organizations and uh, sometimes the national and international ngos they are also uh, involved in the process um, so uh, it is now at the time for bangladesh to think about the uh, uh, legal especially the uh, policy on uh, language because in bangladesh there is no language policy <laughs> if the government uh, can adopt language policy then uh, the indigenous languages can also be uh, included in the uh, national policy so that the lang uh, language development revitalization and the uh, education in mother tongue of indigenous peoples can also be included in the process so uh, our recommendations uh, for the uh, government is actually uh, not only for government maybe uh, we have to work together with the government and the indigenous peoples together otherwise it will not be uh, able to we will not be able to um, uh, achieve the targets so our uh, recommendation is we need uh, an uh, institute for indigenous languages in the country national institute so that uh, the government can take uh, act, uh, projects and programs to develop and uh, revitalize the especially the endangered languages <coughs> uh, here i want to mention that in uh, in bangladesh uh, among the uh, 45 languages there are about 14 languages endangered among them uh, one language called uh, lara it is spoken only by 315 people and uh, there are also many other languages like uh, koda spoken by only uh, one, 1300 people and there are also uh, many other languages uh, spoken by uh, less than 2,000 people. So this type of uh, uh, languages, the indigenous languages, can be uh, should be uh, developed and uh, revitalized. So um, we, uh, you may know that uh, the uh, Bangladesh government has established one uh, international mother language institute uh, to uh, to actually. Uh, work on the languages of the world actually all, all, all of the languages uh, but uh, there is uh, no specific activities for the indigenous people there so we uh, we are demanding there uh, every time uh, so that we have one uh, specific department or one cell for the indigenous people in the institute uh, and also uh, which will be uh, the, uh, run by the indigenous scholars so that that was also one of the uh, recommendations from our side and there are also many other issues like the teachers training the government uh, still uh, doesn't have any uh, process for teachers training uh, so uh, these are also uh, this is also very much a uh, uh, vital issue to uh, like the government has already uh, published uh, books for the grade 2 but still the uh, teachers are not uh, trained uh, to uh, to deliver the uh, classes so uh, my uh, concluding uh, remarks is like uh, the uh, the uh, education in mother tongue of indigenous people it doesn't only uh, uh, benefit the indigenous people it benefits the uh, whole country and even whole, uh, the world because we uh, we believe that uh, the language education in indigenous languages enables children to read and write in their mother tongue and other languages as the education starts from their language uh, and what they know best 
So we, uh, we believe that this also uh, somehow contributes to the uh, SDG, the, our sustainable development goals. And also the early childhood education in mother tongue, uh, it's only possible in mother tongue actually, early, early childhood activities. And uh, well-trained and supported multilingual teachers uh, also needed. And also uh, like uh, MTB MLA enables lifelong learning. The uh, MLA or mother tongue based education helps to address gender inequality also. So this type of uh, many issues are addressed by uh, the languages of indigenous peoples. If we uh, take care of this, uh, the issues of indigenous languages, then many of the uh, sustainable development goals can be addressed. So uh, I would uh, uh, conclude here my uh, speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Tripura and it's uh, for also providing the linkage between the community level and what can be done when you have the community and the government working together and I think that's a very constructive and uh, positive recommendation which I'm sure can be followed up on in different countries around the world. I just also wanted to remind us all that Bangladesh was actually instrumental and to recognize that because I'm also from the Hill Tracks to have 21st of February proclaimed as Mother Language Day. So congratulations on that and I hope that this will also help stimulate greater initiatives and activities at the country level and around the world.